Hey kids, uh, welcome to another video. You will need a ruler for this video so that you can complete your homework correctly and not have wiggly lines as we draw some lines on our coordinate graph. So uh, this is for lesson 10, module six, and the objective is at the bottom. As usual, compare the lines and patterns generated by addition rules and multiplicative rules. That's a fun word. We should say that five times fast. Multiplicative. Multiplicative. I can't even say it. Never mind. Okay, let's just get started. Use the coordinate plane. To complete the following tasks, it's kind of fun and easy. And remember, the lesson 10 problem set video is you got to go search it. This is setness, lesson 10 problem set. And watch that first so that you know what you're doing for the homework. And remember on my problem set videos, I was explain everything uh, pretty well. So Anyway, I hope they're all helpful and click subscribe and come back again. So let's get started here with A. Line P represents the rule X and Y are equal. So if X and Y are equal, remember, I keep talking about this, the line is going to go right straight through uh, the middle of your graph or your coordinate plane and divide the thing evenly into two parts. Okay, that's when X and Y are equal. So now we have all these rules that we're, you know, we're moving the lines all over. Sometimes they're parallel, sometimes they're not. And so this one, this line for D is going to be parallel to line P and contains point D. So what do I do when I only have this one point? You can't necessarily know how to make the line unless you mathematically prove it. So what you want to do is you want to look at where line P intersects along this um, this line here with number two. So if D is on two for X, then you want to see how many units away from line P it is. So from line P, it's one, two, three, four units away. So I can go up to any intersecting point and go one, two, three, four. Or I could go down here and go one, two, three, four. And as long as I'm plotting a point that is the same number of units away from my parallel line, I will create parallel points to have another parallel line. So now you know how to make parallel lines on the graph when you only know one point. Okay, so now we've done this and we're gonna name three coordinate pairs on line D. Coordinate pairs, remember, you have to have two numbers. So it's gonna look like this, fill in the blank. Looks like a little emoji thing, like somebody sleeping. But we're gonna mathematically uh, have something that is more precise, like going to the x value, this is x, this is y, take that 1, and then coordinate with 3. So 1, 3, that's one pair. Okay, we need another pair. I'm not going to use d, but notice that d is at 2, 4. So, hmm, that's interesting. They're 2 apart. 2 times 2 is 4, but 1 times 2 is not 3. Therefore, it's not a multiplication rule. Also, parallel lines to that uh, midpoint line, remember, if it's parallel, it's not going to be a multiplying rule. It's going to be an adding rule. So what are we adding? If you find any whole number, if you want to add the half numbers, that's absolutely fine. This is 3 and a half here. Go up, cross over, and see that it's 5 and a half here. So I always try to keep things really simple and stick with whole numbers. But it, it doesn't matter, it's still plus two. Three and a half plus two makes five and a half. So uh, you can choose your own other coordinate uh, pair. You can have a four, six, you can have a uh, two and a half, four and a half. It's really up to you. Okay, so that would work as well. Or any other whole numbers, one, three. Oh, we already have that one. One and a half, three and a half. Okay, that would work too. So what is the rule to describe line D? We just talked about it. It's X plus uh, two is gonna give you your Y. Okay, and it can have halves and holes and anything as long as you add two to X. You could even have a quarter here, like one fourth or two and a fourth or three and a fourth. Even though those aren't marked points, guess where it lives on the number line? Right between the lines. So. Again, number lines go on forever in both directions with any, like an infinite 
amount of numbers. You can narrow them down, squeeze them down, or you can expand them uh, as far as the number line goes. Let's do E here. Construct a line E that is parallel to line P and contains point E. So it's going to be parallel. Use the same rule. Going down two intersecting points, okay? You can have your points anywhere on this as long as you go down from the line two intersecting points, okay? Now, I have extra points on there. That's okay. Just showing you how to do that. Make your line. Draw it all the way through. There's line E. Did it. Name three points. So let's look at, remember, what line P is. That's equal. X and Y are equal. So if you want to put points on whole numbers, just to keep it simple, uh, you, would, you could use this one here. So 3 for X, which I just kind of put a bunch of points and it doesn't really matter where. And then you end up with 2 for Y. So if I have 3 points, I'd have 3, 2 for 1. Um, we're not going to use 4 because that's already where E is. So you could use 5 and 4. But you don't have to use whole numbers. Let's use some of the points we plotted. So 2 and a half. And then 1 and a half. Okay, so what do you notice about all these uh, ordered pairs? And it's basically just, that's the rule. So how far apart are they? They're one apart. Y is the second number. So Y is the second number and it's consistently lower. It's consistently lower by how much? And that's the rule. X minus one equals Y. Hopefully you answered that yourself and you know that that is the rule. You could also say y is one less than x. That would work too. Okay, compare and contrast lines D and E in terms of their relationship to line P. Well, first of all, I hope you know they are parallel. Okay. Also, D is higher because we added. So remember, the rule that you're following will help you place the line on the graph. What, uh, e is lower because we subtracted. There you go. Straighten. Okay, so they're parallel. When you add, your, your lines go up, and when you subtract, your lines go down below the midpoint. So now write a rule for a fourth line that would be parallel, okay, so it's either going to add or subtract to those above, that would contain the point 5 and a half 2. Let's find out where that is. 5 and a half for x, 2 for y. Okay, so this is below the midpoint. 5 and a half 2 is below the midpoint. Now how far below the midpoint is it? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units below. So let's go 7 units below here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 7 below. Let's skip 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay? So here is your line. You should go ahead and draw that so it can you can see it. And then you can have these other ordered pairs to help you um, come up with your rule. So now if you've got five and a half, two, and you go, I don't immediately know what the relationship is between five and a half and two, but I could possibly figure it out if I look at the relationship between five and one and a half. Okay, so other pairs, five, one and a half. Okay, now I also have five and a half, two. And then look at this one, four, one half. Okay, so um, look at the difference. And so how do you know uh, what your rule is gonna be? Explain how you know, you have to find the difference between the, uh, the given x, y. Okay, so let's start there. 
x and y, so five and a half and two. And I'm just saying five and a half, two being the ordered pair. And then apply that, that same value or amount uh, to other points on the line. Okay, so if you take away three and a half, that's your, uh, your rule. So x minus three and a half equals y. And then why did we count seven below on here? Because we're counting in half units. Each of these, when I say it's seven units below, Okay, that just means seven intersections or seven crossings, but we're really counting in half units. So when you talk about the actual value of the whole numbers here, it's going to be x minus 3 and a half equals y because you have to do the mathematical calculation to find the difference between. Okay, so it's actually x minus 3 and a half, but if you're counting on the graph to make the points, then you can have your down below by 7. Okay? I hope that's helpful, I hope that's clear. Turn the page, we've got a little bit more. Okay, now use the coordinate plane below to complete the following tasks. Line P represents the rule X and Y are equal. We love it when they do that because it just shows us exactly where the half is. Construct a line V right here that contains the origin and point V. Where's the origin? Zero, zero. Don't forget that ever. Very important. Construct your line. There you go. Name three points on line V. First of all, what are we counting by? Have to look at your number lines. Zero to five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're counting by ones. Okay. Name three points. Look at your um, the crossings. When you see this right out here in the middle, there's still a number there. Okay, if you just go halfway down uh, the middle, what's between three and four? And you really have to know that. What's between three and four? Three and a half. Even though it's not on the graph, that's still the value where it crosses. What's it crossing on this line? That's seven. Okay, now I'm not going to put that for my three points on the line because when you guys are working on your own, I'm going to say really look for the whole numbers or look for the places that are easy for you. So if I have the point here and let's say a point here, notice that every other one is going to give you a half value for x. Okay, every other one of these has a half value for x. So uh, for your three points on the line, you could do say a 1, 2, a 1, 2, or a 2, 4, <laughs> or a 3, 6, a 3, 6. Okay. Anyway, um, identify a rule to describe line V. Look at the relationship between the numbers and decide what it is. Okay, here you're adding one, but remember the steepness of the line gives it away. It's not going to be an adding rule because it's not parallel to P. So if it's here adding two, then you say it's not an adding rule, so I must be multiplying. So when you look back, what am I multiplying by? 1 times 2 would be 2, 2 times 2 would be 4, 3 times 2 would be 6, so it's going to be x times 2 equals y. Remember that when the steepness increases a lot and you're still going through the origin, you've got a multiplying rule, and, uh, and so it should be pretty straightforward with that. Now looking at w, construct a line w that contains the origin and point W. This is going to be uh, similar to, but below, okay, similar to but below line V, both passing through the origin. So they're equally distanced from line P. What does that tell you? If this one is multiplying by 2, that should tell you that this one is what? Probably dividing by two. Let's prove it with our points on the line. Uh, construct the line, name three points. Go to 
some points that actually cross right on the whole numbers. It'll help you to just stick with the whole numbers. And then uh, do your ordered pairs. Eight, four, ah, starting out pretty good here. Six, three, and you could predict what something else might be. If we're dividing by two, and that's our rule, four, two would be the other points. And look, x divided by two equals y. You can also do x divided by two equals y. That is the same problem, or the same way to uh, express or get the answer, even though it looks different, same operation. Okay, compare and contrast lines V and W in terms of their relationship to line P. Just talked about it. V is above. And W is below. Equally distanced from P. Okay, so they're, they're symmetrical sort of in their distance from P, okay? Um, v multiplies by two, so close, and then W divides by two. And so that's why you have this exactly same distance from P. We're just using opposite operations, multiplying increasing, dividing, cutting down. Okay, what patterns do you see in lines that are generated by multiplication rules? What patterns? This is where um, you can talk about the steepness uh, of the line, the increasing uh, direction towards the y-axis, if you want to talk about it like that, away from x toward y. Uh, the lines get steeper. Oops. These, these and those, the lines get steeper uh, and they still may pass through the origin, okay? So um, we're just talking about moving away from that midpoint line and yet still it's going to intersect, okay? The lines get steeper they can intersect the midpoint or the midline if you want to call it that. Okay, so anyway, I hope this is helpful. If you have these things on your paper, your teacher will uh, be very impressed. I hope you are understanding it. And remember, don't just copy all this stuff without actually thinking it through and engaging your brain because we want you to learn this stuff. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.